sigma notation and limits of finite sums using the TI-83 graphing calculator. Sigma notation enables us to write a sum with many terms in the compact form. The Greek letter sigma, in this case capital sigma, corresponds to our letter S and stands for sum. The index of summation, in this particular example K, tells us where the summation begins and where the summation ends. Any letter can be used to denote the index. The sequence function on the TI-83 graphing calculator displays the sequence of numbers. Here is the function and its parameters. It's the sequence function and you must enter the expression or the formula you must enter your variable, you must enter where the index begins and where the index ends. To find the summation, to simply add all the numbers in the sequence, you would use the sum sequence function. You enter the expression, you put in your variable, the beginning of your index, and the ending of your index. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's look at an example. Let's write out the terms in the sequence and evaluate the sum. The summation starts at 1 and ends at 6 for the function negative 11x. So we'll simply enter the sequence function so we'll use the second and stat, which is the list option. We'll scroll over to OPS, which is operations. Our fifth option is sequence, and it carries a begin parenthesis. Next, we'll put in our expression or our function, negative 11x. We'll place a comma. Our variable is x. Our index begins at 1. It ends at 6. I'll close off my function and press enter. And my sequence of numbers are negative 11, negative 22, negative 33. I'll simply move to the right negative 44, negative 55, and negative 66. Next, let's evaluate the sum. And in order to ev evaluate the sum, we'll simply embed the sequence within the sum function. So I'll simply enter our list with second and stat. I'll scroll over to math. Our fifth option is the sum function. I'll press enter. Notice that it carries a begin parenthesis. I'll now embed the sequence function. So I'll go back into the list with second and stat. I'll scroll over to operate operations. Our fifth option is the sequence. I'll simply put in the parameters for the sequence function, negative 11x, comma, our variable is x, our index begins at 1 and ends at 6, I'll close off my sequence function, I'll close off my sum function, and we have a value of negative 231. Let's take a look at another example. Let's write out the terms in the sequence and evaluate the sum. The summation, the index k runs from 1 to 5 for the function k times the quantity 5k plus 8. So we'll write out the terms in the sequence. So we'll enter the list by using second and stat. We'll scroll over to operations. Our fifth option is sequence. We'll put in K. 
and notice that k is above the begin parenthesis and it's green so I'll press alpha and the begin parenthesis and then I'll use a begin parenthesis in my function 5k plus 8 and I'll close off my parenthesis next I'll use a comma the variable in this expression is k Our index begins at 1, it ends at 5. I'll press enter. And our sequence of numbers are 13, 36, 69, 112, and 165. Next, let's evaluate the sum. So we'll simply embed the sequence within the sum function. So once again, we'll enter the list, which is second and stat. We'll scroll over to math. We'll use the fifth option. Next, we'll embed the sequence function. So we'll enter the list once again. We'll scroll over to operations. We'll use the fifth function. We'll put in our function once again. variable is k. Our index begins at 1, ends at 5. I'll close off the sequence function and I'll close off the sum function and we get a sum of 395. Thanks for watching.